Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to vlog 101. Yes, and the title, it's a bit of a New Order album title actually, Excuses. And so our vlog this week starts with a story, a very common story that emerges in the doctoral education space and finishes with some strategies to get you, yes, out of excuses. But let me start with a story that emerged in the last month in my office, but as I've said, I've seen a story such as this hundreds of times in the last decade or so. So I had a meeting with a student, it was a 45 minute meeting, and she was explaining what was going wrong in her candidature. And it involved her supervisory team, it involved her mother, it involved experiments, it involved library resources, and yes, it even involved her partner. So I was meeting with the student, with our great colleague, the wonderful Ashley Merrill. Hello to wonderful Ash. And every problem or issue that the student presented, we would present a series of options, ways out of it. And this went on through the entirety of the 45 minute meeting. But every time we offered these alternatives and these options to get her out of it, another excuse emerged. And this happened for 45 minutes. And we tried to do the best we could, but I felt really sad at the end of the meeting because I like a bit of progress, a bit of movement, tried to provide some strategies to move forward. And I really felt that I'd failed. Uh, and I, you know, I don't like that because I, I want the best for our students. And I remember the wonderful Ash said at the conclusion of the meeting, it was just one excuse after another. And Ash was right, and Ash then went on to do her wonderful, very busy daily work that she did after our meeting. And I returned to my office, and I sat down, and I asked a question post Ashley's very accurate interpretation. And my question was, how were these excuses serving this student? How were these excuses serving this student? And then, of course, the next question, how are these excuses actually enabling the completion of her PhD? Mm. So obviously, these excuses are actually blocking her capacity to finish this thesis, to finish this PhD. She's building a wall of excuses that stop the heat and stop the light that will enable the thesis to bloom and grow and transform knowledge. So my vlog this week commences with really a simple question. How are your excuses serving you? How are your excuses enabling the completion of your PhD? And perhaps even more meta in terms of questions, what are you getting out of those excuses because you're doing the behavior for a reason what are you getting out of those excuses and also what do you think you may be losing so I wondered if this was a thing you know it's a common thing I do in these vlogs like oh is this a thing and so I put PhD student and excuses into Google and 167,500 returns greeted my query. So clearly, this is a thing. So PhD candidatures are an excuse-heavy space. Because, and there's a reason for it, completing a PhD is really tough, no doubt about it. Being able to conduct experiments, do complicated analysis, this stuff is difficult. If a PhD was easy, everybody would have one. So in a PhD also, very frequently you have a sense that you have no control <laughs> over what's actually happening, that everybody has power over you. And let me just confirm, that's simply not the case. Yes, you have to work in the parameters of our university regulations, your supervisory expectations, and also your examiner's expectations. But it is very important that you don't relinquish power. You need to control what you can control. You have control over how you think, how you feel, how you speak. You have control over your research and you have control over how you present that PhD. It is your PhD. Let me say that again. This is your PhD. Your name is on that manuscript. Your name is on that degree. So why relinquish power? Why relinquish power to other people when it is your degree? 
Control what you can control. Yes, have a good focus. Grumble bum if you like. Grumble bumming is great. If you'd like to have a howl at the moon, please do so. I try and do it twice a year, coinciding with the solstice. I think howling is a great thing to do. But also, you need to get this thesis through. Boom. Okay? And you need to acknowledge something too. That bad stuff does happen. It's not unusual. You know what? Let's call a spade a shovel. There are plenty of truly dreadful supervisors on this planet. Nasty, revengeful, neglectful, a real pain. There are some dreadful supervisors on this planet, full stop. And you know what? Research projects go wrong all the time. Experiments stuff up, the data set that you hoped you would work with, it didn't materialise, it didn't appear. That happens all the time. That's what research is. And you know what? Friends, partners, significant others, friends, family, complain about PhDs all the time. Because you know what? The academic life is an immersive life. So they say, well, we're neglecting them. Well, you know, we probably are. I say, oh, look, I'm just going to go put in this footnote. I'll just be two minutes, Steve two hours later, and like lunch was meant to happen at 12 and it's now like three o'clock, I go, oh look, sorry about that, I did a few more footnotes. This is an immersive life and we do neglect the people around them and they do have a right to complain, yeah? That's fair enough. But also I think we need to centre ourselves and we always need to remember the privilege that it is to do a PhD. Please remember this. Doing a PhD is a privilege. If it was easy, everyone would have a PhD and 99% of the population don't. But the point is, the bottom line of all of this is excuses are not going to enable your success. Excuses are not going to get you that PhD. But courage and determination will get you that PhD. Excuses stop you from making good decisions. And we have to sort of get real here, to be frank with your team. Bad stuff happens to good people. Now, as a human being, when great stuff happens, we behave well. And of course we do, because when great stuff happens, it's brilliant, it's fun, it's exciting, we feel good about ourselves. So don't judge people when good stuff happens, because obviously it's hashtag pleasant. But we know what sort of person someone is when bad stuff happens, yeah? When bad stuff happens, and bad stuff happens to truly great people, when bad stuff happens, do you show some dignity, some kindness and some compassion, or do you grumble bum at the planet and drag everybody down with you through your excuses? Dreadful stuff happens to great people, full stop. And you know what? Those great people don't blame, they don't shame, they don't ridicule, they get on with it and try and care for and protect other people around them, okay? So this vlog is working from a series of premises. Excuses don't serve you and excuses do not enable the completion of your PhD. The key, I think, is to ensure that your actions, your behaviour, your language, your words, make you feel safe and centred, and they enable the completion of the PhD rather than putting barriers in place for you. So if you are one of those people, and let's be honest, all of us at different points of our lives become this person, that you just simply get trapped and lost in your own excuses, blaming other people for your failures, blaming other people for your lack of progress. Well, how are you gonna get out of that? Because you need to. So at the final bit of this vlog, here are five strategies to move you on today to get you out of these excuses. One, the most important one, I think. So you're wanting change, this is how you do it. One, give yourself one task to complete in one day. Make it a small task. The reason for this is excuses create barriers. Excuses stop you, and yet the PhD requires momentum. It requires movement. So the first stage to get you out of this excuse culture is to just get one step, one bit of movement. Now make it small, give yourself a small task, make it accountable, and make it completely within your control. So wake up tomorrow morning and finish one task for me. Start, finish, and at the end of it, congratulate yourself on finishing that task. 
remind yourself what you have control over and then give yourself one small task and then another and then another and then another, finish them, congratulate yourself, get momentum back into your thesis and indeed into your life. Two, again really important one, block excuse culture. Every time you feel yourself like a, an excuse is coming up your throat, into your mouth and out your lips, every time you feel that happening where you're about to blame somebody else for something, I want you to stop yourself. You might think it, but I want you to stop vocalising your excuses about what other people are doing to you. I need you to just block that behaviour for me until it becomes a habit. I need you to focus on yourself and I need you to look in the mirror. Remind yourself and say it out loud. This thesis is my responsibility. It is my thesis and I control what I can control. This thesis is my responsibility. It is my thesis and I control what I control. Yes, you can make an excuse. It's not serving you. But do a bit of meta work for me. Reflect on what you're getting out of that excuse. Now, if you can locate what exists under that excuse, then that will explain why your behaviour is emerging. Three, and this is of course why the behaviour may be emerging, make sure your excuses are not a method for procrastination. Doing research is hard. Experimenting is hard. Doing a PhD, tough as. But are you using excuses as a form of procrastination? Are you rationalising your lack of work, your lack of progress? Are you denying responsibility for your behaviour? Are you denying your responsibility to change? Four, huge one, this one changed my life, acknowledge failures, acknowledge failures. One of the reasons I think that excuses emerge is from when we're a very little person, when we're actually sort of like primary socialisation with our family, we're taught to be frightened of making mistakes and failing because often our parents will scream at us. So that means through our primary socialisation, if we make a mistake or we fail, we tend to blame anybody else, often our brothers and sisters, so that we actually don't get it in the neck from our parents. And so that's a problem because it means through our life and through our professional life we tend to deny mistakes, we tend to deny failures and yes, blame other people for our issues. So I changed my life a, a couple of decades ago when I was a young adult, made a real difference to me, when I realised, you know what, I'm just going to admit I've made a mistake. I'm going to admit if I've made a mistake and if I've failed at something, I'm just going to front up and call it. Yep, I did that. I made a mistake and immediately go, I apologise for that. Let me now learn from that failure, learn from that mistake, and I will fix the situation for you. Now, this may be a really useful strategy for you. As I said, this changed my life. When we acknowledge an error, we acknowledge a failure early, we apologise for it, and we enact behaviour to correct it. It is very freeing because it means you stop blaming other people for your stuff. You just get on with it. You know what, I've made a mistake. I've failed at this, for which I apologise, let me now fix it. The world doesn't end if you do that, and it blocks excuses and you learn and improve behaviours. Because you say, you know what, I'm responsible. The buck stops with me. And that creates immediate freedom to do something just a little bit different. So if we pretend that we haven't made an error, and I see this on a daily basis, can I say, at a university, then we blame other people and we waste a lot of time. And remember, we are really bright people. We can rationalise anything. You give me three facts and 10 seconds and I'll connect them for you, no matter how bizarre they may be. Because it's always convenient if we can change the focus from the personal mistake we made to oh, all the other external factors that are causing these issues. Instead, what I ask you to do is take responsibility. Your life will change if you take responsibility. A characteristic of successful people is that they acknowledge mistakes, they get on with it, and they improve the situation. Last one, five. Choose between excuses and progress. Benjamin Franklin said one of the most remarkable things that I actually have on my wall at home. Excuses are tools that the incompetent use to build monuments to nothing. Excuses are tools that the incompetent use to build monuments to nothing.
end of quote. You are better than that. And let's just acknowledge stuff. You know what? Supervisors neglect students, full stop. Happens around the world. Money is tight. Yeah, it is. Lab work fails. Yeah, it is. There are writing up challenges. Yeah, there are. But control as much as you can control and use as much autonomy as you can. And also, don't confuse justifications with an excuse. By the way, neither serve you and neither get you a PhD, but at least justifications have some evidence behind them. Excuses are just raw, painful, negative emotions. So start to remove the excuses. What I want you to do is remove the excuses, and you know what? Do something. A PhD requires consciousness and it requires centeredness. A PhD is a really temporary moment of your life and you need to take risks, you need to make decisions and you need to jump over obstacles. But the way you do that is to park your excuses. What I want you to do is give me one day and then give me another day and give me another day. I need you every single day to achieve something without blaming or shaming or ridiculing others. This is an excuse-free zone. I wish you love, light and peace. From beautiful Flinders University, tea out.